Welcome back mathematicians. In this video, we are going to learn about the graph of the tangent function. So unlike sine or cosine, this is not a continuous graph. Instead, the domain is X such that, so that vertical line segment means such that, X cannot be equal to pi over two plus pi times K. Now, because we have K, we have to define K. And this last part is defining K is an element of the set of integers. So that Z represents the set of integers and that symbol rep represents element of. This is actually shown to us on the graph as vertical asymptotes. So we have a vertical asymptote at negative pi over two, at positive pi over two, three pi over two, negative three pi over two, and it doesn't stop there. It's just this is the window that I was able to uh, put into this video here. So it continues on forever, infinitely, both to positive infinity and negative infinity. The period is the length of one cycle of the curve. And in this case, the fundamental period is going to be pi units. And we see this as the completion of one curve occurs uh, with a horizontal distance of pi units. We also see this as the distance between the vertical asymptotes. Finally, there are three important or critical points with each curve. You'll see that you have an x-intercept with each curve, and that is probably the most important point. So we have negative pi comma zero, zero comma zero, and pi comma zero, that's actually the midpoint between the vertical asymptotes on the x-axis. And then we also have these additional points that are uh, important to graph, which is at negative pi over four comma negative one and pi over four comma positive one. So this really helps us define the shape of these curves. I didn't quite plot these same points on the other curves, but you can see that they would be here where I'm highlighting. So these are the three points that you can use to represent each curve. The equation for the general tangent function is y equals a times the tangent of omega times x plus b, where a, omega, and b are values that represents transformations. These are most of the transformations that you will experience with the tangent function. The only one that I left off in this case is the phase shift or horizontal shift. So A is actually going to represent a vertical stretch or compression. We no longer call this an amplitude. That is only for sine or cosine. So it's a vertical stretch or compression. To find the vertical stretch or compression, you need to take the absolute value of A. And if the absolute value of A is greater than one, it represents a vertical stretch. If the absolute value of A is less than one, it represents a vertical compression. Next, you need to calculate the period. To do this, you're going to take t is equal to the fundamental period, which in this case is pi. Remember, that's a difference from sine and cosine. And we're going to divide this by the value of omega. If omega is not equal to 1, this represents a horizontal stretch or compression. Next, we're going to go back to a. And if a is a negative value, then that represents a reflection with respect to the x-axis. And finally, b represents a vertical shift. So if B is positive, it's a shift up, and if B is negative, it's a shift down. Let's use this information to graph the equation Y equals 3 halves times the tangent of 1 fourth X plus 1 half. So first, what we notice is that the absolute value of A is equal to 3 halves. So this represents a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 halves because 3 halves is larger than 1. Next, what we notice is that we have a B value of 1 half. So this 1 half represents a shift up 1 half. Finally, we have to check our period. And so T is equal to the fundamental period, which is pi divided by omega. And omega, in this case, is 1 fourth. When we simplify this expression, we get 4 pi. And as a result, what we need to do is recalculate the new vertical asymptotes or new domain. So this is step number one in this process. We're going to calculate the new domain, which will give us the new vertical asymptote. To do this, let's go ahead and recall the standard domain for your tangent function without any transformations, which is x cannot be equal to pi over two plus k times pi. Now, what we will do is take any transformation that affects the x coordinates and apply that same transformation or transformations to the domain. And the only one that really does affect the x-coordinates is going to be that 1 fourth, which did affect the period. So we're going to take that 1 fourth and we're going to divide each element of the domain by 1 fourth. This now gives us our new domain for the tangent function, for this tangent function, which is x cannot be equal to 2 pi plus 4 pi times k. From here, what we will do is use that inequality to calculate the new 
vertical asymptotes. So the new vertical asymptotes, when k is equal to 0, will be x is equal to 2 pi. When k is equal to 1, x will be equal to 6 pi. And when k is equal to negative 1, x will be equal to negative 2 pi. Now you could keep going on to infinity, but these three vertical asymptotes will allow us to plot two curves, which is two cycles or two periods of the tangent function. I'm now going to go ahead and plot these vertical asymptotes onto the coordinate plane using vertical dashed lines at 2 pi, negative 2 pi, and 6 pi. From here, what I would like to do is to plot our points given the horizontal stretch, but without the vertical stretch or the shift up. So again, recalling what I said a few minutes ago, what we know is that the x-intercepts are the midpoint, and then the other two points are up one and down one, up one and down one from the x-intercepts. So you have these three points. These are the three critical points for each curve. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply the vertical stretch. So this is going to be stretch by a factor of three halves. So what this means is I'm going to be multiplying all my y coordinates by three halves. So for the very first point here, I would have negative pi comma negative three halves. The x-intercepts will remain the same, and then I will have pi comma three halves. I'll do it again to the next curve. So three pi will be at negative three halves. Four pi will still be at the or at the on the x-axis, and then finally five pi comma three halves. Finally, what I would like to do is go ahead and shift this up. So I'm going to shift up by one half. So every point will be shifted up one half. So I'll have of my first point at negative pi comma negative one. Then I will have zero comma one half, and then I will have pi comma two. Doing the same, repeating the same process for the next curve, I'll have 3 pi comma negative 1, 4 pi comma 1 half, and then finally 5 pi comma 2. I'm now able to connect this with a smooth curve. You'll notice these curves for the tangent function do look like the cubic function, so you can connect them in a, in a similar pattern. They do follow along the vertical asymptotes. Very important that they never cross or touch the vertical asymptotes, and there you go. All right, guys, good luck.